One of the learning goals in this workshop is for us to understand what are intangible assets and the method of amortization. Intangible assets are invisible assets. And examples of them are patents, trademarks, trade names, franchise. They have something common. It's the exclusive right on patents. It's the exclusive right to manufacture. On trademarks, it's the exclusive right to reproduce. Trade names is the exclusive right to use a specific name. Franchise is the exclusive right between two parties to sell products or perform services. Just like tangible assets, intangible assets also have a limited useful life. The decrease in value of intangible assets is called amortization. It is very parallel to depreciation, but they are intangible assets, they are called amortization. Although there are three depreciation methods, the depreciation method that has been used for intangible assets amortization is straight line method. Intangible asset can be amortized to a maximum period of 20 years and it could be shorter. There are special intangible assets. The ones we looked previously are specific intangible assets. The special classes, a uh, special class of intangible asset is goodwill. Goodwill is the value of all favorable attributes that does not relate to specific asset. The goodwill is measured as the favorable attributes not relating to specific asset. It is the difference between market value of the organization and the book value or the accounting value of the organization. And that difference is the favorable attributes have brought in but not related to specific assets. Let's say the market value is 2000, net book value is 1800. So the difference between the two is 200. The 200 excess over the net book value is because of attributes not related to specific assets and that is called goodwill. But goodwill can be recognized as an asset only when the business is bought by another person or a firm. It is a buyer that can recognize that goodwill. But the company that is having or generating goodwill cannot recognize that as a separate asset. When we talk about special intangible assets, we also talk about research and development costs, although they are not strictly intangible assets. But research and development costs can lead to specific intangibles like patents, copyrights, new processes and new products. The research cost that 
the research costs are expenses and they have little commercial expectations. For example, it could be a research undertaken to understand how the market operates for a new product that has not been developed. Development costs are where the product has been developed and a prototype has been developed and it is now being tested. And development costs are where there's high commercial expectation. And after meeting a strict set of criteria, those costs can be treated, can be recognized as intangible assets.